What is up everybody at home? It's Ryan Nelson and you are watching The Ryan Nelson Show. This is a special edition of The Ryan Nelson Show because we're talking to one of my favorite athletes, favorite people, because I'm an All-American fan, Spencer Paysinger. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's going to be fun. So how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Just been running errands and stuff. Happy that we were able to connect. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do have to ask, like, how does it feel having one of the number one shows on Netflix be based off of your life story? I'm still actually understanding like the weight of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been so entrenched with even, you know building out season three and even going back a couple of years with season one and season two. Right. Once people found it, it was like, wow, you guys, you guys are really liking the show. Like this is interesting. Well, we mm -hmm. always knew that our stories, if, if done right, would have would have spoke to you know anybody from you know the eight year old black girl that's right. been, that DMs me saying how much she loves the show to like the seven year old white guy that says he loves yeah. the show just as much for the same reason. So. It's just been a blessing to, to know that not just my story, but a story about a young black kid in Los yeah. Angeles is resonating with the world. Absolutely. And, and I relate to it myself, and, and so does Kijan, because we were black kids who went to a predominantly white school. Mm -hmm. What was that culture shock like for you when you went, when you went started going to Beverly Hills High? Uh, it was, I immediately realized that I was poor uh, when <laughs> I went to Beverly Hills. Okay. And that, to me, it was, you know, growing up in South Central, everybody has the same socioeconomic stance like right. sometimes we had things sometimes we didn't have things but mm -hmm. it wasn't so it wasn't like oh i'm mad because i don't have cable or right. maybe the water wasn't hot for two days it's like you just made do mm -hmm. but once i got to beverly it was like oh yeah it's not only do you guys have everything you need you guys have everything you could ever imagine mm -hmm. like excess yeah it's mm -hmm. just it's complete excess and mm -hmm. i think that was one of the biggest adjustments just knowing that you know going out to dinner with friends or going to hang out with friends and like mm -hmm. The price comes up on the bill, and I'm like, I don't have that much. Man, um, you know, just little little things like that. It was definitely a right. culture shock, but I think sports in general, football mainly, uh, helped me assimilate into that culture a little right. bit easier. And I, I think you guys do such a good job of showing how there's two worlds, even though mm -hmm. you know, I, I I call it two Americas. Mm -hmm. There's two Americas, but totally different lifestyles that are shown and. And to portray that on screen and to be so good at it, how how involved are you in the creative process? Because it's your story. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go back to one of the original documents that mm -hmm. we sort of drafted up for All American. Um, back then, it was titled everything from Spencer to Untitled April Blair Project or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in the first paragraph, we wanted to highlight South Central as much as we highlight um, Beverly Hills. Oftentimes, right. when you tell these stories and um, Early on, a lot of people that we were talking to about the show were just like, oh, this is like the blind side. And again, no shade to the blind side, like right. Apple or story, however, he, if he thinks the story is good or not, mm -hmm. it was a story about a, a black kid being saved from right. a black neighborhood to go into a white neighborhood that was technically just better. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to do that from the jump. We wanted to say, as much as we're showing Beverly Hills and what the world knows is Beverly Hills, right. We wanted to show that for South Central. Now, Beverly Hills is known as like opulence and decadence and just lavishness and whatnot. But South Central, outside of the games and all that culture mm -hmm. that the media sort of you know placed on it, and it's there. It's, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it's right. definitely there. But there's a rich sense of family. There's a rich sense of community in South Central. Like, right. you can't do away with us because we do band mm -hmm. together in that neighborhood. So we just wanted to bring that to the national scale with all America. Right. What was one of the greatest values that? coming from Crenshaw that you carry with yourself now? Um, just, I think it was, we'll figure it out. Right. Like me, me specifically, my family, like it didn't matter what you put in front of us, it didn't mm -hmm. matter what obstacles were in front of us, uh, like we were going to figure it out. And I think that's still one of my biggest traits to today. Uh, if you give me a job, even if I don't know how to do it, right. I'll do the work to understand it, to, to get it done to the best of my ability. Right. So, yeah, it's just like we're we're unwavering in that. Cool, cool. And I think Daniel does a really good job of being a great like definition of who you are. Yeah. Did you choose him when it came down to casting? When they showed you probably all these guys that could possibly play well, you. So what's interesting is I, I was still somewhat tied to the NFL um, during the casting process. So they would only be sending me some of the strongest candidates. I just couldn't okay. be in the offices with them. Right. I was still. Um, just still have my football obligations. Yeah. But I remember I was in New York uh, in a coffee shop and one of the producers sent me Daniel's uh, uh, film read. Right. And he actually, 
uh, audition for Selma to play John Lewis, rest in peace of John Lewis. Wow. And I, I watched him, I watched him, uh, <clears throat> I watched that audition tape and a few others, and I thought like, this kid's good. Like, right. if we get him, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't think he was this marvelous actor, and just kind of didn't know what was good. And I, right. I, I wasn't you didn't have an first eye for it. in, yeah, I okay. just didn't know. Um, but then when I met him, you know, he comes up to me with like the backwards hat on and the ball <laughs> and the sweatshirt. He's uh-huh. like, what's up, what's up? I'm like, bro, you're British. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Like, and it just, it just showed his, his, his work ethic because he didn't break his American accent until after we were done shooting the pilot. Wow. And I'm talking that was from me meeting him to shooting the pilot to rapping was probably like a month. Okay. Um, and he just, he just did the work. And that's the one thing that I'm, I don't, I'm never going to take pride and say like, I'm the one that picked him or anything, right. but the, the powers that be that picked him, like mm-hmm. they, they couldn't think about that. Right. And then I think when everybody found out he was British, I'm like, he just flips his accent on yeah. and off. Like that is insane. Shout, I mean, again, that's a piece of Nipsey Hussle. He, uh, you know, Daniel, when he was crafting his South Central tongue for, for the Roman Spencer, he only listened to Nipsey Hussle music. That's how he understood, Very cool. you know, because South Central, whether you're, whether it's Compton, Watts, South Central, like these are three very different places. And right. I know a lot of people in Beverly Hills and beyond think South Central, oh, Compton is right down the street. Or, mm-hmm. oh, you if you're from South Central, you just been to Watts. You've been to yeah. this area, Long Beach or whatnot. And I'm like, they're com- two, com- three, four completely different that's neighborhoods. Right. So by dialect, it changes. Yeah. So he, he knew that. Nipsey Hussle grew up, you know, within a few blocks of where I grew up. And it was okay. like, this is where, this is where I want to harness, you know, my voice for the Spencer. I didn't, I didn't tell Daniel, you need to follow me. I didn't say, okay. you need to be like me. You need to see who I am to yeah. make Spencer. I said, listen, just make a compelling character that right. you're proud of. Like, I'll be here if you need me for any guidance. Cool. Um, but just go make the character that you're, that you want to put on screen. Very cool. There's another character on the show that's just getting so much heat right now. <laughs> Tay Diggs. And I know in the in the show he did wrong. I'm not saying it's right what he did. Yeah. But in season three, are we gonna see him get a little like just just a break? Because I just feel like man, like I think he don't catch a break. At all. I think uh, I think in season three we're gonna see Tay start to you know go through like a self discovery phase. Okay. Uh, I think for the first two seasons. You know he's been he's been trying to put on this idea that he has it all together right um even like the sweatsuits that we picked for him are like peak for him yeah <laughs> but i think in his third season he's going to go down this route of like truly redefining who he is as a man as a coach as a father Very okay that's good now i want to flip it towards more football and your football career mm-hmm. For those of you that don't know, like I feel like I'm giving away all American spoilers. No, but, no, you're um, good, you're good. He did win a Super Bowl. Yes. Um, I, don't, I don't see the ring, yeah. but it's all good. Um, what was it? What's the culture like of a Super Bowl winning team? Like the locker room? Uh, it's 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 hyper focused. Um, okay. It's it's something that you know I would always say that 2000. So those of you that don't know. I played a total of seven years in the NFL, uh, four years with the Giants. I won my, I won a Super Bowl with the Giants my first year. Uh, two years with the Carolina Panthers, and my last year was split between the Jets and towards the end of the season, Carolina Panthers. But that first year winning that Super Bowl, I like to think that we had, we had like the perfect season. Mm-hmm. And when I say perfect season, people think, oh, you need to go 18 and 0, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Right. It wasn't that. It was. We experience, I think, every high and every low that you can experience right. in a football team in a football season. Where mm-hmm. we started off six and two, uh, then we went into like this no win November, where I think we dropped like six of the next seven or eight really? games or whatever. And by by like week 13, 14, it was winning the home. Okay. So by the time we hit playoffs, we were all we had already been in playoff mode because we knew mm-hmm. what was at stake. And having Eli Manning at the helm, having guys like you know, my locker was right next to OCU New York, you know, wow. um, Justin Tuck was like a, a big brother to me. With, right. Brother. And just there, the hierarchy that came in that locker room was like being a lowly rookie. Yeah. I only had to worry about special teams. And, you know, okay. all of our special teams for that championship team was I think eight or nine of those guys were rookies. Wow. So it allowed us to kind of take that pressure off of. You know the intro roles and Dion Grants and those guys. Oh, out. Wow, that, you guys had a good team. Yeah, we had we had some we had some dogs on the team. You know JPP like those mm-hmm. guys. 
we we took that off of their show we took special teams off of their shoulders okay. so they can only focus on offense and defense and like this is the year that victor cruz mm. became victor cruz mm. so okay. you know it was it was it was hyper focused it was a hierarchy to where people knew where they were on right. that totem and were proud to like hold up their place on that totem right. um I wasn't walking away after practice like, man, I wish I got more reps on defense. Uh, it's like, that's good. No, like you guys want me to be a dog on special teams. That's exactly what me and my other rookie teammates are going to be. That's and good. we were able to get a Super Bowl out of it. That's a great rookie experience. You don't hear many NFL guys saying that, man, my rookie year was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there was this like, I'm carrying pads and, you know. Well, I was definitely yeah. carrying pads. I okay. was carrying pads. I was buying snacks for the linebacker room. Oh, man. <laughs> we were paying for dinners every now and then for the uh -huh. for the linebackers and the defense and whatnot. But right. with that came a brotherhood. Like, I, mm -hmm. I can call any one of those guys today and have that conversation. And, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, hey, what are you doing? How can we help each other? Whatnot. So, Very cool. um, yeah, shout out to that entire team. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, now that's a great rookie year like i said good team to be on I, I, like i said i don't want to give away spoilers for mm -hmm. all american but what about your college experience yeah and by, by all means like i think right now spencer james is on a slightly different trajectory than spencer basinger mm -hmm. so i'm okay. completely fine like don't feel like you right. need to like say spoilers or anything like yeah because he was it. him and darnell visited ucla and i remember i was like man that'd be so cool if they could go <laughs> and then me sometimes getting impatient i'm like you know what let me go google his yeah <laughs> google yeah. and see what happens yeah but um but so in terms of my college experience yes. like because like, oregon is it's not what it will eugene is that a small would you say it's a small town it's a small town okay. yeah it's a small town that's getting mm -hmm. bigger Okay. Uh, the the town is literally built on the university. Uh, mm -hmm. If you take that university away, the Eugene goes with it. Like um, many SEC schools. Yeah. Okay. It's, okay. it's that. It's when you're there, you're, you're treated very well by the community. You're mm -hmm. you're embraced, and you know they're taking this, notoriously taking kids from South Central and beyond, wow. and bringing them in and saying like, "Hey, you are a duck now. It doesn't matter where you came from. Mm -hmm. If you're wearing if you're wearing the green and yellow, like you're a family." Right. So that experience was great. We went from you know losing in the Vegas Bowl my first year there to losing a national championship my last year. I lost it against uh, Cam uh, Newton in 2011. Auburn? Yeah. I remember watching that. Yeah. Uh, Cam is Cam. I Cam is Cam. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't lie. We'll yeah. say like he, I remember um, it was literally in the middle of a play. We knocked him down and we had been getting to him a lot. Yeah. And he was like, man, y'all y'all have been killing me today. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was it was cool. To, it was cool to like hear that from him because obviously, you know, at the time Pac-10 was considered you know, soft or, you know, okay. couldn't hold up with the SEC you know, mm -hmm. and to lose. I think we only lost by like two or three. It was a last, last second field goal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we had the game within our grasp. It didn't shake our way. But my overall experience at Oregon was great. It was yeah. a family environment. It was guys that came from, you know, similar areas as myself um, mm -hmm. that we kind of banded together. But it also allowed me to experience something new in the world. Right. You know, my mom after college, maybe this maybe this falls into the show in some capacity, but my mom always told me, uh, you have to go either a four hour drive or a two hour flight away from LA. She said there's nothing for a 17, 18 year old kid in Los Angeles. And my okay. this is out in 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. So it allowed me to just look at other campuses. Like this is the like Bush era, this yeah. is my life. So I'm like, if SC calling, I'm going. Like, yeah, there's no, that's hard. There's no way I'm walking away from USC offer. I never got offered by them, mm -hmm. but it allowed me to just see a different way of life that would, I think, ultimately allow me to grow as a man. Okay. Well, that's good because a lot of kids, they don't get that opportunity to go away from home yeah. and experience a whole new, different yeah. culture. Very cool. Yeah. I, mean, I know we, we all know of All-American, but is there anything else that you have? I'll yeah, um, I'm likely going to release my short film to the public. Uh, I have the website built out for it, um, but it's called Shortcuts. It's a film about a young black man dealing with having to find a new barber after his barber goes missing. Oh man! And this is an experience Tragic. I actually went through where I hit my barber up one day and he just did not respond. Kept hitting him up, didn't respond. A few weeks went by. I'm feeling it. I'm looking like it. Probably yeah. looking like I'm looking like now. Um, and I just had to go through that experience of like finding a new barber, and it's taking that look of our relate a black man's relationship with a mm -hmm. barber is much like a emotional relationship. It is. So you don't want to cheat. Yeah, <laughs> if you, you don't, get caught, you like, don't want to cheat, but you know there might be a better one on the other side. Yeah. But then you realizing like 
you go with a person that you've known the longest that's done right by you. So yeah. that's all tied into it. So I'm gonna release that soon. Uh, I'm continuously writing uh, a bunch of new concepts, uh, developing a handful of new concepts. Some right. things are, I don't like to talk too in depth. Right. Uh, I got an animated project that's looking like it's going. Um, right. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into more writing and directing. So before we get out of here, where can everybody find you on social media? You can find me at Paysinger, um, P-Y-S-N-G-R, so it's my last name without the vowels, and that's Instagram, Twitter, and likely anything else. Okay, well there you guys have it. Not Spencer James, but Spencer <laughs> Paysinger. Thank you.